Oh boy. Okay, listen. If you are just here for the guide on ion beams, here is the timestamp. They take up a majority of the video and after researching this topic I can understand why I was asked about them specifically. With that out of the way, let's get started. Lasers. Probably the easiest weapon to pick up, but also the easiest to mess up. It shines with its simplicity, yet offers enough ways to optimize its usage. And thanks to the longer shape of the blasters and prisms, it allows the engineer to be a bit more creative with their design decisions, instead of creating wall number 407. This guide will cover the following topics. Advantages, disadvantages, quirks and recommended playstyles, as well as mitigating certain problems through decent design. So, why should you even choose lasers? Lasers are basically the polar opposite to cannons. They have a high fire rate, high muscle velocity, no random spread and also don't explode if they get destroyed. Most of the time. Add in the fact that they don't require ammo and therefore no real attention, lasers are the perfect weapon for newer captains or people who tend to forget to check their stockpiles for ammo and minerals occasionally. As long as your reactors are running, your lasers will fire, nothing more required. This also makes them perfect for fleet commanders, as their low maintenance and lightweight makes them the weapon of choice for smaller crafts like flankers or swarmers. However, while their high precision and muzzle velocity will cause you to hit the same tile multiple times in a row and therefore have a high concentration of firepower, the actual power itself can be embarrassing at times. While in previous guides I always try to get as far as possible while only using one archetype of said class, like only cannons, only railguns, only missiles, etc., you won't get much enjoyment by only playing blasters or ions. Your standard blasters lack damage and penetration, and even if you double up on blasters to compensate the DPS, you still have to chew through the enemy ship tile by tile, with no penetration and no fires. So while your blasters will take longer to kill the enemy than cannons would, the enemy actually has an easier time killing you, due to the fact that your regular blasters have the same amount of HP as a 1x1 armor tile. Even the heavy variant only has as much HP as a standard cannon. So either you have to sacrifice good firing arcs by placing them sideways, or you have to put high emphasis on shields, which will compete with your cannons for power. And if the enemy has disruptors, you will need to treat that craft as a mini-boss, as you will constantly lose your shields, and your blasters will suffer the same fate. It's not doom and gloom though. Energy weapons can have amazing synergy with other classes, but also with themselves. I will get into that as soon as we are done talking about the four archetypes. Just keep in mind that this isn't the weapon system for you if you want a one-trick pony type of ship. The blasters are the most common type of weapon that you will use and fight against in the early game. They come in two sizes, but their general characteristics are similar. They have high muzzle velocity and no weapon spread, with high fire rate and low energy consumption. They are fragile though, so while you can literally cluster them around a the reactor, I recommend to put shields in between them. Usually, I would advise you to not put reactors that close to the front and instead use capacitors here, but since both your weapons and your shield consume energy, capacitors just don't cut it. Throw in enemy disruptors and that capacitor will be empty in no time. How do you build a good array? By constantly adapting. No, I'm serious. I will show you some setups which should work under standard conditions. Keep in mind, however, that energy consumptions will vastly vary depending on how much stress your shields will experience and where the array is placed in general. On the far sides, you won't need that many layers of defense to keep your innards intact. At more vulnerable places, you might need to double up on shields and reactors. Build these suggestions for the start and then evaluate whether it works or not. Let's start with small blasters. This is just to showcase the low cost that they have. Do not build your ship like that. With 5 blasters and 8 crew members you get 2665 DPS, which is respectable, but we need to change this. No survivability and the reactor is completely exposed. A few good hits by piercing weapons will blow this apart. That's better. A shield and a few layers of solid armor. This way your reactor will still be protected even if the shields go down. But due to the longer travel distance, you will need 10 crew members this time for the blasters and additional personnel to keep the shields up under stress. Which, by the way, also shows why 4 blasters will really stress test your reactor if the shields get under fire. One disruptor is of course able to flatline the shield and reactor. But against one laser, it's sufficient 
and two lasers with roughly 1000 DPS combined will cause the occasional power outage. If the array is supposed to endure more, build a second reactor and dedicated shield personnel. Remember that your shield loses energy by being hit. It's not a health bar that goes to zero, breaks and then needs to be recharged. Instead, you can just recharge it more than it takes damage. By adding a second reactor and six dedicated shield operators, we are able to withstand over 3000 DPS while barely changing the basic design. This configuration will also be able to get the shield back online quicker if the shield breaks. Later on, you will unlock bigger reactors with higher energy production and higher capacity per battery. But the core philosophy will be the same. Protect your reactor and shield with layers of armor and keep track of your blaster's consumption per second. Leave some breathing room for the shield consumption and you are good to go. And if you feel like your shield gets taken out too quickly, try to increase the reactor number, reactor size or number of shield operators before you start integrating more shields. They take up space that could be used for armor or weapons and if your reactor can't produce enough power or too few people supply the shields, then your two shields will go down just as fast. Also, while the setup can take quiet beating, a single disruptor can still cause issues. More on that in a dedicated defense guide, but I feel like at least the shield part is mandatory for energy builds as you don't have the luxury of a sturdy front line. However, there might be a different ship design that can at least partly protect the blasters with solid armor. While cannons are wide and flat, lasers are long and thin with a wider firing arc. Why is that relevant? Because we can do these shenanigans. This will be your best strategy if you want your blasters to be protected as much as possible. The diagonal design is also preferable if you decide to go the fleet commander route, as it's perfect for a smaller craft because it can pack more firepower in a smaller profile. Plus it's nimbler since all of your engines can be used for strafing. Disruptors. Thankfully these follow the same construction rules as blasters, so there is no need to repeat the last segment. The disruptors are both your best friends and biggest nemesis. You won't get around these if you only want lasers. Why? Because you lack the power to burn through shields. Especially later on when pirates start to layer their shields as the numbers just aren't in your favor. Thankfully the disruptor doesn't care about shields and just punches right through them, sucking them dry in the process and doing the same to any energy based system it hits after. This quickly disables his shields and provides a short window in which you can take out his weapons or other important modules. Bonus points if you use a disruptor to disrupt the disruptor trying to disrupt you. Two important things to keep in mind though. A. The enemy can do the same to you, so seriously think about whether this is the best course of action and if you can even survive without your shield. B. This thing has 180 meters of range, lower than cannons and second lowest on the market. You are treading dangerous waters with that weapon, Captain. If the enemy has cannons and punches through your shield and armor, expect to write a few apology letters to the new Widow Benefit recipients, if you survive at all. That reactor looks mighty volatile today. Two more systems and then we can start with the ions, point defense and mining laser. Yes, I put this on here as a weapon, you will see why in a second. The point defense system follows its big blaster cousins example by being basic and low maintenance. No crew required and only needs an occasional battery. Also really easy to scatter around your ship. Especially your sides and rear end will thank you if 4 or 6 point defense systems save their lives from high explosive or EMP missiles. For the front however, the debate between point defense fans and flag enjoyers can be summed up this way. Point defense arrays are better if you deal with giant missile spam, as the turret traverse speed is basically instant and the firing arc is 3 times larger, almost covering your entire front and also useful to cover your flanks and rear, as the crew investment is significantly lower. Flag if you are afraid of nukes or if you want to do something that point defense can't. Shoot down disruptor bolts. The mining laser is usually a tool, but if you have enough energy and crew to spare, they surely can be an asset as they are the only energy based deck mounted weapon and deal more damage than to blaster. Just keep in mind that the damage per energy is abysmal, but if they are set up for regular mining operations anyway with their own power source, feel free to use them during combat. Thanks to not being in the front row, they will fire even if you get bombarded by disruptors and EMP missiles. The Ion Beams Strap yourself in, because this will be an interesting topic. Let's get the fundamentals out of the way first. 1.25 energy per second, meaning that you will need about one small reactor per beam, one medium reactor per three beams, 
or one large reactor per 10 beams. You have 300 meters of range, which is more than enough. However, you lose a significant amount of damage if you engage the enemy at maximum distance. I tested this by taking notes about how much damage you deal at certain distances and figured out that the damage falloff is A, immediately, so near actually means point blank, B, the damage falloff is linear, and C, both your range and your drop off and damage will be resetted with every prism, meaning that you can get way lower damage output than the mentioned 1750 in the tooltip. It will of course never happen to that extent on any real ship. But keep in mind that unnecessary paths within your ion clusters will have an effect on their performance. Now the exciting part. The correct merging of beams and how many beams makes sense. For that we need to know how the damage is calculated. If you merge, you will get 100% of the weaker beam plus 75% to the power of number of beam minus 1. So basically, you will get 100% plus 75% to the power of 1 plus 75% to the power of 2, and so on. Why is that relevant? Because it means that you will waste a ton of damage if you fire multiple beams into the same prism, or cripple your stronger beam if you merge different damage values. Some examples. If you merge two ion beams, you gain 175% total damage. If you have four ion beams and fire all into one prism, you get 273% total damage. Already lost 77% in comparison to making two outgoing lasers, with two initial beams each. If you have four beams, but really want them to go into one beam, you should always build them like a binary tree. Two pairs go into one prism respectively, those two equally strong beams then go into another single beam. You basically repeat the first example, but for the second stage you trade the 100% for 175%, which will get you roughly 306% damage. Still worse than two outgoing beams, but better than four and one, and the best middle ground between lost damage and more focused fire. You know what? We will do an extreme example. This way I have already explained some numbers for later. We take 16 prisms in two setups, one where all 16 go into one prism, and one where we use the binary method. First one looks like this. 396% damage. Second one looks like this. 938%. I hope you start to see why I'm putting so much emphasis on this whole binary part. Now that we know that, how many beams in a single outgoing prism do make sense? Let's say you stay at maximum range and therefore have 1750 damage. Now we only take 1500 because we lost a decent amount within our ship due to merging distance. We also want to destroy an 8000 HP armor block within a decent time frame and with minimal damage lost due to overkill. If that thing has 200 HP left and you blast it with 4k, that damage will just go to waste, as it's not transferred to the next armor block. 8000 divided by 1500 is about 5.33. So we need 533% damage in a single beam to kill an armor block in one second. Easy enough. Thankfully, we already did the math part. 536% damage by binary merging, resulting in 13,400 damage per second, or 1340 damage per tick at point blank range. Meaning, for our test, we should destroy that thing in 6 ticks. Almost. Close enough at least, but it proves that the math is correct. So, with this setup, you will be able to destroy an armor block within a second at max range. Perfect. But can we do more? Yes. We take the structure double it and gain 938% or 23,450 damage per second at point blank range. Sounds amazing. 2,345 damage per tick obliterates the armor within less than half a second. But you have to keep in mind that you just spend 16 ion beams to generate that. The raw DPS is 40,000. You almost wasted 50% of your firepower. And I'm going to show you another magic trick. Remember earlier that energy weapons don't explode most of the time? Prisms don't exactly follow that rule. The more a prism is charged, the more explosive its destruction will be. Long story short, maximum 8 beams is what I would recommend, and always in a binary tree for best results. If you have more than 8 emitters, just shoot multiple beams at the enemy. And for the love of god, protect your prisms. Multiple shields and a very narrow barrel should do the trick. A beam is only half a block wide, so you can put additional triangles on the inside. 
This is incredibly important in the early game, as a two short barrel might enable smaller enemy ships to fire right down into your output prism and your shields won't prevent that. Also, if your beam starts to act up like suddenly deciding not to fire, set the firing vector of your last output prism to the end of your barrel. Your firing arc is going to be nearly non-existent anyway and put the beams on a hotkey and on auto fire. This way you will always keep firing. If it just won't hit the sweet spot that you are aiming for, press Romeo and rotate the ship slightly. Binary tree, 8 prisms max, long barrel. These should cover the most important aspects of efficient beam designs. Last topic, weapon synergy. As mentioned earlier, your weapons have comparatively low DPS. Even your ion beams are rather low if you compare the crew and resource investment to other options like missiles or cannons. What they do have, however, is unparalleled drilling capability thanks to their concentration of power. All they need is a window to punch through the enemy's defense, which is why you will need disruptors. Getting within 180 meters with an enemy ship is risky due to them being able to fire their cannons, but if you can disable the shields, you can burn right through to the ammo storages. Later, however, you also have to deal with multiple enemies. Here you can choose between two options and both involve blasters. Either you build multiple fighters or frigates of your own. Equip them with disruptors and blasters in order to attack weak spots like engines for example. Or you scatter them around your flagship so it can defend itself against multiple targets while focusing down one with its ion beams and disruptors. And point defense is a must, since EMP missiles will demolish you. You have many tools at your disposal, and you will need all of them. Good luck! This hopefully covered all the necessary topics. If you still have questions that were left unanswered, feel free to ask them in the comment section. I will also link a site that I use for the first wave of general information. I salute you, Captain Redstone. This is also my last video for 2022, as I won't be able to rush out the armor video before New Year. So I'll use this opportunity to wish you all a good start into 2023, spend some time with your loved ones, and I will see you next year. Captain Caffeine signing off.